In this lecture, we will examine population composition and change, including population pyramids and the demographic transition. This information is valuable to geographers to show a demographic picture of the variations within a given population and how it could possibly change over time. Governments and businesses rely on this type of information in the production of goods and services. One tool that gives us a glimpse of the composition of a population is the population pyramid. A population pyramid shown here is a bar graph that depicts the age and gender makeup of any given population as a percentage of the whole population. The males are shown on the left, the females on the right, and each horizontal bar indicates a five-year increment in age, beginning at age zero or birth at the bottom up to 90 plus years old at the top. The bottom line shows the percentage of the total population of each age increment. For example, if you look at the population pyramid for the Philippines on the left, Looking at the most bottom bar, about 6% of the population is between the ages of birth and 4. You will notice population pyramids have different shapes. The three basic shapes that represent different growth patterns. A true pyramid shaped graph like the one for the Philippines indicates the population is growing rapidly. A cylinder shape like that of Australia indicates the population is growing but very slowly. A cylinder shaped pyramid usually always tapers off at the higher end of the age range, but will keep an even shape for most part of most part from birth until then. And a third shape resembles a somewhat inverted pyramid or similar to a tornado and, and indicates that population is in decline. A shrinking base as we see on Japan's population pyramid indicates population decline. If this trend continues, Japan will have an inverted population pyramid in 2050. As a result of the shift in population, geographers look at the age dependency ratio of any country. The age dependency ratio is the number of people under the age of 15 and over the age of 65 as a proportion of the working age po population. The closer the number is to 100, the more the age dependency population is the same as the working age population. This information is vital to a country to help them predict and plan for how their society will change. For instance, if you have a large young population, you would want to plan for educational needs to adequately support the number of children entering the school system. On the other hand, if you have a large elderly population, a country would want to plan for how to adequately support health care and retirement plans. So a large age dependency ratio may place a huge stress on the working age population since they would be the ones to pay taxes to support the services for the young and old. Another ratio that geographers analyze from the population pyramid is the sex ratio. The sex ratio is the proportion of males to females in a population. In normal conditions, more males are born than females, giving a slight imbalance. The natural sex ratio, therefore, is 105 males to 100 females. There are many factors that contribute to the imbalance of the normal ratio. Females naturally live longer than males, and males have a higher mortality rate due to war. On the flip side, some countries like India and China have higher sex ratios. This is due to a strong cultural preference in these countries for males. Immigration can also affect sex ratios in a given country. The photo shows laborers recruited from the United Arab Emirates from other countries for its from other countries for its industries. I'm sorry. The photo shows laborers recruited by the United Arab Emirates from other countries for its industries. Therefore, creating a population pyramid showed on the right. For the entire population, the sex ratio is 219 to 100 and the sex ratio for 15 to 64 year olds rises to 20, 274 to 100. Another demographic that geographers track is the rate of natural increase of a given population. The rate of natural increase, or RNI for short, is the percentage of annual growth in a population excluding migration. In other words, the rate of natural increase is the crude birth rates minus the crude death rates and is stated as a percentage. For example, in 2012, the birth rate for the world was 20 per 1,000 and the death rate was 8 per 1,000. The difference is 12 per 1,000, which when converted to a percentage yields a rate of natural increase of 1.2%. A rate of zero means that the 
population is neither declining nor growing. A negative number indicates the population is declining. The map shows the rate of natural increase around the world. Look at the extremes. Russia and a few Eastern European countries are seeing a population decline, while some countries in Africa are seeing an increase. Furthermore, if nothing catastrophic occurs within a population, then we can expect the population of the world to continue to increase due to its young age structure and rising life expectancies. The rate of natural increase is also used by geographers to determine the world's population doubling time. This is the time it takes for the population to double its size and gives us a sense of, of, of the pace at which the population is growing. At the 2012 rates, the population is expected to double in 58 years. Before the middle of the 18th century, the rate of natural increase was relatively low and therefore the total population remained relatively stable over thousands of years, growing very slowly without extreme peaks and valleys. It was not until the process of industrialization that began in the late 18th century did we start to see population explosions. The demographic transition model is derived from population trends in Western Europe before, during, and after the industrialized revolution that had and has four stages. The chart shows the four stages of the demographic transition as it moves through industrialization of the economy. The original timeline at the top was that of Europe a few hundred years ago. At the U.S. followed shortly thereafter. The first stage is considered pre-industrial with high birth and death rates and low RNI. Unfortunately, the lifespan during this stage is short. It is an agrarian economy and many children are needed to work for the family. Plus, they tended to die young and the family had to ensure some lived into adulthood to continue to help. Death rates are high due to the lack of proper health care and sanitation. The second stage is early industrial. During this stage, the birth rates remain high. Children are needed, still needed to work since technological advances are in the beginning stages. However, death rates drop significantly due to medical advances. This gap in high birth rates and low death rates produces very high rates of natural increase and the population explodes. In the third stage, or late industrialization, the rate of natural increase is declining due to birth rates dropping and death rates are already low. As the society becomes industrialized, many children are no longer needed, plus they aren't dying as young as before, and therefore many do reach adulthood. In the fourth stage, or completion of the demographic transition, a country reaches post-industrialization, where birth and death rates and the RNI are all low. The chart also shows at the bottom a few examples in each stage in the world today. Please pause the video and study the chart. There are no questions to answer, but I'd like for you to take a few moments to get acquainted with this information. Please pause the video and answer the following. Why are age, dependency, and sex ratios important to the study of geography? In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific with your answer.